Here we have the uh, analytical balance with the cover off. The uh, top board here, this is the power supply part here. This is the uh, microprocessor and memory. And uh, the uh, analog parts. Um, getting the cover off, of course, involves pulling first. Push down back and then it pops up here then you can lift it straight off there's a screw here and a screw here and you can lift it off this piece comes off this way and we're to the mechanism. Now, this one I bought for uh, very little money on eBay as a parts only thing. And you can see what happened because there's a dent right here on the uh, weighing pan. That dent indicates that something heavy was dropped, which bent the mechanism and broke the flexor back here. I have uh, put together a flexor out of um, aluminum and put it in place. To, not particularly scientific, but um, it was quick and easy. This is the analog board. Back here is the slot and vein sensor and its amplifier. The um, whole thing moves about that far, uh, limited by a screw right here. I was, of course, concerned about this flexure I built and didn't expect it to be perfect. But I thought if I could get to a 10 milligram accurate repeatability, I'd be fairly happy with it. There are a couple of things I want to point out. When this balance... Uh, when I got the balance, it didn't work at all. And I assumed it had been badly damaged. So, I uh, took it apart to this point, found the broken flexor, took this frame, top frame apart, put the flexor on, and it started to weigh. It did not, however, calibrate or weigh anything over 30 grams and I think what happened was Mettler set this up with a an accelerometer in it that measured the acceleration either probably here or maybe one of these chips as the measures the acceleration if the acceleration is exceeded by some amount it means that the down uh, balance has probably gotten damaged like when this heavy object came down. I did measure the voltage coming off the analog board and found that it seemed to be able to measure um, up to probably even 200 grams. So I thought, well, this is interesting. I noticed these dip switches um, Mettler doesn't give any documentation for this at all, but I thought, well, I'll just flip the switches and at each one, flipped each one in turn. When I got to switch six and flipped it up, the whole behavior of the balance changed and now it will weigh um, quite readily to its, to its uh, maximum specification. I haven't tried to go through the calibration routine, 
since I flipped that switch because I uh, I didn't uh, really care when you uh, I'll, I'll go through the weighing procedure in a minute that I use that works very well the um, replacement of this these are slotted and they can be moved now you you have corner error and what you do when you when you do this is you'll have this cover on which I keep trying to put on but what you're going to do is adjust these screws these three on the top uh, to minimize the corner error you take your weight and this doesn't have to be any particular weight you put it on the pan on one side then you put it on the other side get the weight between them put it on the pan zero put it on the pan here put it on the pan here and you can adjust these screws to minimize the number of problems you have here now you still want to try to weigh always in the same spot which would be the center of the pan but but the the corner error is an important uh, thing to minimize and you do it you test it the um, uh, currents air currents are too strong with this off for it to weigh reliably so I take a, uh, a book a heavy book and set it on there like that when I do the test so this is out away and um, you can do it that way so that's the basis of, uh, of how I got this thing to work and it weighs now uh, now I now I do my own calibration this is the calibration weight and if you look down there you can see when you do this it drops this weight onto the pan underneath you also have to make certain that this plate here is not rubbing this can move sideways there's really nothing holding it and so you have to make certain that it's not rubbing on the side there. That's uh, enough. We'll put it back together now. Um, you can plug it in and, and do your tests quite effectively this way and just turn it on. We should have that on uh, and zero it. Which maybe it'll zero. I don't know if you can see this. There's the zero. And you can set a test weight on there, which this one reads 50. 0.20 something now the way we calibrate this is we take a calibrated weight which these are are good calibrated weights you put it on here you get the weight then you put you know it's supposed to be 50 so you go 50 divided by whatever you read which um, when it settles down looks like we have too much air currents for it to settle down It's like 6.1 divided by 
and that gives you a multiplier, in this case 0.99589 or whatever, and then you can multiply other weights by that. I just store it in the calculator and then I can take another weight zero that, say this 10, 10 gram weight now I can also this 10 gram weight put it on there um, and to take the, the, the value I get which looks to be 412 so I take 10.0412 times recall and I get 10.0003 as my uh, value. So this is actually weighing within a milligram quite, quite effectively. That's the whole thing about how to repair this. If it's more extensively problematical, uh, probably not much you can do. The uh, principle of these is that you have a uh, a balance of some sort mechanism and it has a, a coil and a magnet or a coil and electromagnet and the um, slot and vein sensor which is just a, uh, a vein in front of a slot so that you get the uh, amount of light then is um, amplified and compared to a reference and if it changes the uh, force on the magnet is changed to restore it back nothing moves when it's weighing which means that the flexors don't flex or um, anything else of that nature which makes them capable of measuring very sensitive amounts now we'll see if we can wrestle this this piece on This is a draft collar. It's not, it's not down. There we go. Now let's try again here. Draft collar keeps the drafts out. Of course, the doors work like that. Like I said, I'm not going to do it, but this screw goes in under here and holds the whole piece together. <laughs> 